In NFIB v. OSHA, the Supreme Court was addressing the question of whether OSHA has the authority to implement a vaccine mandate for workers in private businesses, and basically to require private employers of 100 or more employees to require their workers to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Biden used the OSHA statute, which governs workplace safety, in order to do this. A group of businesses challenged this um, mandate and basically argued that OSHA didn't have the authority to implement this uh, vaccine mandate. This case was heard on an emergency basis and was expedited because there was a deadline of January 2022 for employees to get the vaccine. Two appellate court decisions, the Fifth Circuit, Sixth Circuit decision, and then the Supreme Court decision all came within about a month. The OSHA statute comes from the 1970s, um, and it's about workplace safety. It was enacted in order to ensure that workers uh, were safe in the workplace and were protected from various hazards. OSHA does have the authority to regulate private businesses. The real battle is about whether COVID-19 is a workplace-specific hazard that falls within OSHA's purview. NFIB argued in this case that OSHA didn't have the authority to implement this vaccine mandate. That OSHA is really about workplace hazards that are specific to the particular workplace and that a vaccine is not within OSHA's purview. They used the major questions doctrine, the canon of statutory interpretation that basically says that if Congress had intended for an agency to be able to do something that has vast economic and political implications, it would have explicitly stated that. OSHA's response to that was that the statute does permit it. Uh, the statute governs workplace um, hazards and that this was a grave threat and a new hazard, so it fit within the statutory language. OSHA did draw comparisons to other hazards and workplaces that are regulated and the court found in favor of the plaintiffs and granted a stay of the vaccine mandate, saying that OSHA governs workplace hazards and COVID-19 is not specific to the workplace. But if Congress wanted an agency to do something of vast economic and political significance, it would have explicitly stated so. And here, the OSHA statute does not talk about vaccine mandates, certainly not COVID-19 vaccine mandates, and that Congress actually had passed quite a bit of emergency legislation. So if it had wanted OSHA to be able to do this, it would have said so. Well, the dissent in this case said that um, there's no reason we have to limit workplace regulations to things that only exist in the workplace. And they made the point that, you know, fire doesn't just exist in the workplace. Tripping hazards don't just exist in the workplace. And OSHA should be able to implement regulations in order to protect American workers. One of the criticisms that this decision garnered was that there was not much analysis of the text of OSHA. So the terms, for instance, uh, grave threat and new hazard that the dissent focused a lot on, the per curiam opinion did not. And some people have interpreted that as the court sort of reaching a decision that it wanted to without really going into the text as they usually would have. This opinion is, is consistent with originalist jurisprudence. The court was looking a lot at you know, separation of powers and it simply did not believe that Congress intended for OSHA to have this authority. So there was a lot of debate about what OSHA can do and the sort of amount of authority that agencies can exercise over private businesses.